Hello, hello, and welcome to the Boeing Him Real Estate Podcast. I'm Paul Balzotti. I'm here with Irina Colbert. Welcome, Irina. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, and today we're going to talk about property management. And residential property management is, and commercial property management, all of it is quite different than sales. Mm -hmm. So we're going to cover that difference a little bit. We're going to give some tips for investors and and some anybody who wants to get into rentals or is in rentals and talk about your experience in property management. That's why you're on. So let's let's get right into that. So talk to us about your property management background. Yeah. So um, prior to real estate, I was doing property management for about two years. Um, and those two years of experiences uh, were very, very diverse. So let's just put it that way. Um, I started off with student housing experience, which is obviously student housing. So you're dealing with basically only students that are going to college. Um, so that was a great experience in itself because I was dealing with um, a little bit of a younger generation, which can be a little bit harder, but um, it was a beautiful experience that kind of helped me get into regular residential living and resident, you know, residential housing. Mm -hmm. So um, I started working for bigger companies who house basically everybody and anybody, Section 8 people, um, older generation, younger generation, babies, everybody. So you're mm -hmm. looking at a lot more experience with that. Um, and those experiences really helped me understand what it's like um, helping people find housing in rentals, which is a lot different than helping somebody buy a house, obviously. But it definitely did help for a lot of reasons. Um, the best thing that I can say, though, is that Helping people find housing really helped me understand um, the rules and regulations with uh, with property management, which now I can use for investors in this field of real estate. Yeah, and you've been in sales now for well, at the time this is being recorded, about a year. Mm -hmm. And I love that when I met with you to get into the business. By the way, this is just a side note that you said, "Hey, you know, I got some advice early on that I should maybe consider doing property management first. Mm -hmm. um, and so you were very intentional. Mm -hmm. about getting into property management first yes. before you got into sales yeah. to gain that experience, which is super cool. So kudos to you for that. Thanks. So you have this experience in property management. Now you're in sales. So you understand both. Let's just kind of start with, let's say you are a buyer right now, like you're, you have a buyer that you're helping mm -hmm. and they're buying a rental for the first time. Um, what if they don't want to hire a property management company right away, or they can, you know, that's, and they want to do it themselves or they're considering it doing themselves. And, or, cause you can also do it where you can, you can hire a property management company to help you um, just find a renter, or you can hire them to manage it the entire way through. There's mm -hmm. two different types of property yeah. management fees, right? So let's say whatever the case may be, they want to be more involved. What are some tips for that investor that isn't going to hire a property management company? What have you learned along the way on that? For sure. So the first thing I would say is definitely try to find a property manager, <laughs> especially if you are a first-time investor. So don't, so don't, <laughs> so don't, not do, don't do it by yes. yourself. Um, I would recommend against that for sure, especially if you are a first-time investor. Yeah. It's kind of like the same reasoning for if you are like a first-time homebuyer. You definitely want to recommend, you know, it's a recommendation as a first-time homebuyer to hire a real estate agent. Right, because mm -hmm. if you're a first-time home buyer, you really don't know what it takes to, you know, buy a house. It's a scary, stressful process. There's a lot of, you know, rules and regulations with it. So it's always recommended to, hire, you know, hire a real estate agent when you're buying a house for the same reasons that it's recommended to hire a property manager with, you know, investing. Because yeah. there's a lot of rules and regulations as well with property management, um, especially here in Washington State. So definitely, I would 100% recommend hiring a property manager, but. If you can't, if or you, you can't. don't, yes, if or you, you can't, or you don't want to, or you don't want to, it's still, <laughs> exactly. what's the, let's, yeah, what would, there's still going to be some insights there. For sure. There are a couple of things that I would recommend at that point. Um, if you are a first time investor and you have this house that you want to put up and just have somebody live in it for, you know, a little bit, always default to having a lease that is a fixed term. Mm -hmm. That way people can renew it. You can renew it. Your tenants can renew it. Um, it's usually typical to have a 12-month lease here in Washington State, but I've seen some six-month leases, three-month leases. Uh, but definitely uh, definitely look forward to doing a fixed term lease. That way it's renewable and it's something that has a fixed start and end date. Um, with that being said, I always recommend against month-to-month -month leases. Although they are very pleasing to a tenant's eyes, <laughs> uh, they're very, very hard for the landlord to deal with. Mm -hmm. So um, as a first time investor, definitely don't do not do a month to month lease in the beginning. It's really, really hard. Um, another thing I would probably say is that if you are finding a renter for yourself, 
always screen the applicants. Um, screening is super, super cru uh, crucial. It's like the most important part. Um, it's usually like forty dollars or so to get a yeah. background check on somebody. And, and there's there's multiple websites that you can do the the screening with, and they do. Yeah background and they'll do credit check. Yes, yes. Yeah. And it's super inexpensive. It's like 40 bucks or so. Um, and a lot of times you can ask them to pay it, mm -hmm. you know, if you want to yeah. work that way. You'll, I know most of those websites, you can send them the link mm -hmm. and they have to put in their credit card. Yeah. 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 So most property management companies will charge uh, applicants for that. It's called the application fee. Yeah. Um, but if you're doing it yourself, just definitely uh, you can always charge your tenants. Like you know, like you mentioned, you can always charge them for that. Uh, but always do that. Always screen and do a background check on everybody that is going to be brought into your home. Um, and another thing that I would kind of recommend for investors who are doing this for the first time. Always keep things in writing um, and try to avoid collecting cash for your uh, for your rent because cash is really hard to trace. And if you ever do get brought up to the courts, you can't really do much for yourself with cash, right? You want to have checks or direct wire into accounts. You want to have receipts for everything, all of that. Yeah, and I think that bringing up the putting things in writing is so crucial because every time I've worked with a landlord – they get into this thing where they'll have some great tenants. And so they'll start kind of doing some things. Oh, okay, well, you'll do this for me if I do this for you. And then they don't put it in writing. And it's all great until something hits the fan. Yep. And then as soon as there's a problem, all of a sudden, the tenant will send them an email with they'll Google all their rights. And all of a sudden, they're getting like attorney language written. Out there. And so people can turn on a dime as as most people know, mm -hmm. as far as you know, once it gets personal about their house, mm -hmm. about their money, oh, yeah. um, where, you know, if you didn't put things in writing early on about every little thing, it, it, Washington State is very tenant friendly, right? And so with our, with our laws. So as a landlord, you have to be even more on it mm -hmm. with what you have in writing, exactly. how you handle your business. Yeah. Um, you using the benefit of the doubt is could come back and bite you. Yeah, you have to protect yourself at all costs, regardless if you know the tenant or you don't know the tenant. It's super, super important that you protect yourself as a as a landlord and as an investor. And just, you know, play it safe by keeping everything in writing, um, any kind of communication, just try to stick with emails and texts, try to do less talking on the phone or in-person talking. Yeah. Uh, you want to have notices for everything. It's just keep things in writing and um, avoid verbal promises and communication as much as possible. Totally. Agreed, agreed, agreed. And so let's get into talking about if you're hiring a property management company, mm -hmm. what the fees can look like and also how to choose a property yeah. management company. Just full disclosure, we're now associated with a property management company, um, Green Ocean Property Management. Right now, that's out of Anacortes. That covers Anacortes and Oak Harbor and LaConnor and, and Mount Vernon and, and the North Skagit County area. We hope to eventually bring Green Ocean Property Management into Whatcom County. Um, not there as of this recording, December 2022, but um, we are affiliated with one in the region. But in general, somebody's listening right now, looking for somebody in Bellingham or elsewhere, what steps would you recommend they take to pick in the property management company? Yeah, for sure. There's a couple things that I would recommend. Um, if you are looking at a property management company, uh, they usually do have reviews online that you can reference to. Um, so definitely look at reviews. The only thing that I would say about reviews with property management companies, though, is that it's really hard to find a five out of five star rating property management company. And the reason for that is because um, tenants have a lot of misunderstanding of property management companies and who the property management companies are actually representing and who they are um, seeing as clients. So usually uh, tenants think that property management companies work for the clients of, uh, sorry, they usually think that property management companies work for the tenants. Yeah. That is a huge misunderstanding. Property management companies almost always actually represent the owners of the homes and apartment complexes. So so the owners and landlords are actually the clients of the property management companies and the tenants are just the receiving company, the third party company, or I guess third party um, in general. Uh, they are not actually the clients of the property management company. Right. So because of that, tenants, whenever there's an altercation with property management companies, the tenants will take it out on the property management company, Absolutely. which is where you're getting that three out of five star rating and all that. So. 
Uh, just definitely keep that in mind. You won't find the perfect five out of five star property management company for the most part. Um, but definitely look at the reviews, see how property management companies deal with both landlords and tenants, uh, you know, finding that equal balance, uh, seeing how much they charge is a huge thing as well. Um, you know, if you are if you're trying to find a property management company that is going to be renting out your single family home, uh, you're looking at probably around anywhere between six to 10% mm -hmm. uh, monthly income is going to be your fee. Management fee is what it's called. Um, but if you're um, trying to find somebody that's going to be managing a whole apartment complex, it's going to be a lot lower. It's usually about three to 5%. Um, so those are just average numbers uh, yeah. to keep in mind. Um, but yeah, for sure, if you're looking at hiring a property management company, always look at the reviews, always ask for referrals or um, like recommendations, always get quotes. So um, quotes is a huge one. Definitely you want to kind of shop around for uh, property management companies or property managers in general. Don't just stick with the first one. Um, and then also just making sure that um, they have access to attorneys because uh, property management and the rules and regulations, they change fairly quickly here in Washington state. So um I would definitely recommend hiring somebody who knows what they're doing and who is aware of updates when they come. That's really good. And one thing that I would add to that is, and this is giving a little shout out to Green Ocean and Skagit County, mm -hmm. is I've always felt this way about property management companies forever, is I've had my best experience. This is just personal, anecdotal, but I like smaller property management companies because I feel like the manager, the property manager, let's say, because normally you're going to have maybe somebody in accounting who's helping with collecting checks and stuff like that, but then you're going to have a manager. Yeah. And knowing that manager, you know, kind of belly to belly, and then that way there's a good accountability there, whereas like a really large property management company, if they have kind of just people coming and going um, in the different positions, then, you know, the the property manager doesn't really ever build a big a, a, a relationship and rapport with the with the landlords and the tenants mm -hmm. and and then there's less accountability yeah. there and so it's like if i i like to know the person's name not mm -hmm. just like this property management company yeah you know it's like okay at ours it's like i know alan i know alan will take care of residential and commercial clients for that at for green sure. ocean but like in you know if i'm hiring somebody random um, just a property management company, mm -hmm. you know, it, you can get somebody different. And one manager might've been great. And then if they quit and leave or they get moved to a different department, mm -hmm. you get somebody different. The person does matter. Oh, yeah. Right. And yeah. so that's my, that's my two cents and there. That, that's a great point. Um, it's really, really important to have somebody that is like a go-to in the company that you can always just reference to and be like, Hey, what's going on with our client? Bob or whatever. Right. And they'll just know on the top of their head who Bob is, right. what their situation is. And um, that's really, really nice. Um, but it's definitely hard to find that, especially in property management companies nowadays. There's always like a high turnover rate uh, yeah. for a lot of reasons, for the same reasons that I mentioned earlier, which is where tenants really take their anger out on property management companies <laughs> where you know property management companies are working for the owners for the most part, right? Yeah. Uh, but if there's any altercation between owner and tenant, the tenant actually takes it out on property management companies. And that's really hard. It's really, really hard to be a property manager. Well, that's actually uh, another reason why it's good to have a property <laughs> management company is not just the legal ramifications, um, but also just kind of having that buffer yeah. of when <laughs> the, the tenant party. when the tenant calls and says, oh my gosh, this just flooded or what the heck is going on here or whatever with the neighbor, having somebody who's kind of, you know, doing that For first, sure. kind of taking that on first, those, exactly. <laughs> those angry calls. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, fair enough. So I like all that. So how is that transferred for you uh, going now into sales? You're working with clients. What kind of, we've talked about this a little bit already. Mm -hmm. You kind of started with this, but what things have, are you doing to help your buyers when they're looking at buying a rental right mm -hmm. now? Or what tips, if, a, if somebody's looking for an investment right now, what, what kind of what kind of things are you t are you showing yeah. them? Yeah. So when it comes to um, kind of just allowing property management to help me with um, with sales, the biggest thing that I can say that can really really help my potential buyers is now that I've worked in property management here in Whatcom County, I have a really good understanding of what makes a good property a good 
rental. Mm -hmm. And um, I know basically not only what makes a good investment property a good one, but I can also kind of pick out the bad ones for the most part. Like I can usually tell them like, hey, you're going to be making approximately this much for this home. Um, but even though this one's more expensive, you're probably going to be making less for X reasons. Um, and it's really, really good for me to just like help investors with that because location wise, I can, you know, I know this area very, very right. well. I was born and raised here, so I can really help them pick the good locations to look at. Um, I can really help them figure out what makes a good investment property a good one. Um, and then with my experience with property management, I have a really good understanding of what um, what gets, well, what factors to really take into account when you're figuring out the values of um, like how much you're charging rent. Um, I feel fairly, fairly confident um, advising like how much you can approximately charge your rent for. But um, the most important thing above all of that is that since I work in sales and since I'm working um, every single day just studying the market, I have had um, that beautiful experience with understanding the market and how it actually ties into real estate with, um, with rentals. So as the market changes, rentals change with values. So basically how it usually works is when interest rates go up, the demand for buying houses goes down. And so buyers are not buying as many houses. With that being said, rentals tend to go up. So with rentals going up and the demand of rentals going up, the values of rentals go up. So that supply demand situation is something that I can now advise and like educate my investors for. And it's super, super nice because my property management experience has really helped me understand that graph. Now I can actually help potential investors with it. So That's great. Yeah. And you know, We've we've had a podcast about affordable housing. We have an agent in our office who works in affordable housing, and that is something that we care deeply about. And but one thing for an investor to know, um, for the better or worse, is in Whatcom County, I, I've had a rental property for let's uh, tw yeah twenty years, and the rental value of it has never dropped. So and I. I and that's our market that we're we live in in Whatcom County. That's not that's not the same in every market. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, and there's other markets where things go up and down more, mm -hmm. and you can buy a lot cheaper housing, and you can actually buy cheaper housing for higher rents, and and basically end up with better cash flow even. But mm -hmm. here, the stability. Um, the long-term home appreciation, uh, the, the the rent stability as far as being the demand always being there and then rents either being flat or going up, mm -hmm. that's that those metrics because of the lack of housing that we, we constantly always oh, have yeah. Yeah. is always in place. Exactly. And so um, it's that's why it's you know going to continue to be a popular place for um, people to invest their money. Mm -hmm. and, um, well, and to your point, you know, it, when the market's down, yeah. Um, the market's slowing down a little bit right now. Rental prices, even though they're trying to build more apartments right now, rental rates are still are still really strong. Yeah. Um, and over the long term, it's a very consistent, strong rental market. Exactly. And um, particularly with housing and even townhomes and things like that, it seems to me like I've never I've never had a property to date in twenty years. Mm -hmm. I've never had a buyer who's bought a place. Went to go rent it and been like, man, I'm not getting very many inquiries. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like there is just for housing. There's just always, as long as you're relatively reasonable about your rates, there's just always demand, and yeah. that is a really great thing that you have this kind of background that allows you to have your finger on the pulse a little bit more of what rents are actually going for mm -hmm. and how they're going to relate. Yeah. So that's really good, and then you can help them with their cap rate and all that kind of stuff for their cash flow. So exactly. Good stuff. Well, thank you for joining, Irina. Thanks. This has been really fun. And if you want to reach out to Irina, I highly recommend it. She's fabulous, clearly. <laughs> and uh, for all your investment needs and any property management questions, I'm sure, too. And thank you for watching and listening, you guys. Cheers. Bye.